Our journey towards our patrol area off the Rockall Bank continues despite the high seas that the Atlantic throws our way. I have high hopes for that patrol area. It is so far away from the English Isles that only really two engine planes should be able to reach it, which will make it much safer for us. At the same time, the convoys coming from America have to pass nearby, and those hunting grounds have proven to be fruitful in the past for other submarines. My hope is that we won't have to wait long for a convoy to appear, that we can then repeatedly engage until we run out of torpedoes. With a little bit of luck, we will be able to return to Lorient much sooner than anybody anticipates. It is quite fortunate for us that we met the small convoy and the single Greek merchant on our way to the patrol area. Many U-boats leave port and then don't see a single target for days, sometimes even weeks. Just by sinking those two ships, we have made sure that this patrol is a successful one. And I'm sure that we will encounter more. If only the weather was a little bit more cooperative. We are being tossed about in our little steel tube by the high waves. If it gets any worse, I won't have a choice but to dive the boat and to proceed underwater, which will severely reduce our speed. Well, I should have kept my mouth shut. The weather did get worse. On top of the high seas, heavy rain has set in. Visibility has been severely reduced. But because the wave height did not change, I decided to stay on the surface. A decision that is not popular with the crew, especially not with those that have to stand watch on the conning tower. But I say that the potential opportunities that might await us if we arrive in our patrol area early outweigh the hopefully temporary discomfort of the crew. Anyway, the wind is blowing south. We should soon pass through the storm and hopefully encounter calmer waters behind it. My gut feeling was right. After we passed through the storm, it wasn't long before we encountered calmer waters. We are now in our patrol area, and I hope that we won't have to wait too long before something comes our way. My hopes of encountering rich hunting grounds that will just drop a convoy into our lap have been dashed. We have been traveling this area for a few days without encountering anything until now, that is, because there, out of the haze, out of the darkness, suddenly a silhouette appears. A lone steamer, traveling fast and heading our way. The crew is sent to the battle stations. We don't have much time before he will pass us. Hello there, and welcome to a new episode of our Silent Hunter campaign in U55 with the One Alex Mod Edition. We have a situation on our hands. I'm patrolling here in the dark and all of a sudden a ship appeared in front of us. I don't know what kind of ship it is. I don't know its allegiance. I just know that it is coming more or less our way and it seems to be it seems to be coming on pretty fast judging by the bow wake and well how fast it is approaching. Turn the boat. Increase our own speed. I want us turned around, just in case that we need to run. Because I don't know what this is, I don't know if it is armed or not. And I would not like to be surprised by it. So we will turn around, get on a parallel course. See if we can establish speed and course and everything. And then we'll go from there. The first step, however, is to make sure that we are safe. That's always the priority. Damn, that thing is hauling. It is really quite fast. What kind of a freighter is it? Looks like a merchant. I... is that... I can't quite tell what kind of flag I'm looking at. I think we'll be able to tell it a little bit better once we have completed our turn.
Keep turning the boat. Keep turning. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Okay. That should be enough. Rather zero. Now let's see. Full speed ahead. We have been sighted. Turn left. Turn port. They're engaging us with an anti-aircraft gun. Flank speed ahead. Let's get away from it. They are... They're sounding their horn. Shooting up flares. I'm not sure if they have any help out here or not. In any case... This has not worked out the way I wanted it to, but I don't think it matters. Man the deck gun. They want to fight? We'll give them one. By the way, deck gun, hold your fire. The deck gun is manned. Let's uh, turn the boat. Slow down. Okay, the deck gun should now swing out. I think the target is in, in the arc. Not yet. Yeah, it should be. Okay. Target them. But you know what? Please hold fire. Just target them. Make sure that you're on target. No, you are completely ignoring that order. I wanted to try something. Because they usually mess up their first shot. Damn it, we're still in range. Fire away, aim at the waterline, yeah. Keep going at it. Okay, we have the first hit on them. That should set them on fire relatively soon. I can now say that that is a red flag up there. So that is most likely a British ship. They spotted us and they decided that it would be a good idea to engage us with their anti-aircraft gun. Let's just say that they are severely outgunned. However, that was close. They put a salvo across our bow. And a few rounds directly into the side of our boat. I do not appreciate that. And we are still in range. How far can that thing shoot? Yeah, but we are scoring hits on them. This is only a matter of time until this fight becomes extremely unfair for them. More flares are being shot into the sky. And we are smashing apart their bow. I'll try to get ahead of them, so that I am... Um... Oh, rounds incoming. Oh, short. I'll try to get ahead of them so that they can't fire at us with the anti-aircraft gun. Which seems to be mounted on the stern. Damn, they are really putting up... They're putting out a torrent of fire. But so are we. Okay, the fire has stopped. We must be out of range by now. And indeed, we are. Turn the boat. Give my gunners a better angle. Yeah, yeah, you may shoot up flares. Slow down the boat. Give our engines a little bit of uh, a little bit of rest.
There we go, we have a fire. Finally. Finally on fi a fire on board and more hits. Watch off, sir. What do you think? How far away is the target? Yeah. Two and a half to three kilometers. That's what I thought. So at that range, the anti-aircraft gun is simply not effective any longer. Or maybe they can't even tell where exactly we are. They are basically just shooting into the darkness at this point. And I can imagine that by now, the smoke on that ship is making things impossible. In fact, let's go over there. Take a look. Let's see, how does this look from their perspective? From their perspective, well, their bow has been mangled. You can tell that much. And they are on fire. And somewhere, somewhere out there in the darkness, you see that? You saw it just now. Somewhere in the darkness, there are sporadic muzzle flashes. It's pretty much impossible to tell how far away these muzzle flashes are. But they keep coming and the shells keep flying in. Right now the yeah, they are turned directly towards us, so they are presenting a very small angle. And my gunners keep missing because of that. That is not too surprising. We'll slow down the build. That should make us a little bit more accurate. Now let's look at this. Maybe they are now turning, trying to get away from us. Or maybe they are trying to close the distance to allow the anti-aircraft guns another shot at us. We can see the anti-aircraft armament here on the stern. Looks like two 20mm cannons. It can be dangerous to a U-boat. Definitely. But for it to be dangerous, they have to get a bit closer. And well, right now, they're not having a good time. My men still keep missing. Oh, well. <laughs> and there's immediately a nice hit. Yeah, it's not looking good for them. There comes another flare. Burning in the sky. Burning bright. Burning just as bright. Well, maybe even a little bit brighter than their cargo hold at the moment. No, they are definitely not having a fun time. I, however, now that that ship has turned, I need to turn as well. Otherwise, I'm unnecessarily increasing the distance. Which really hurts my accuracy. We are now over three kilometers away, I think. Yeah. That's what I thought. This is where the accuracy of your gunners really, really starts to drop. Now that they have the broadside of the target to shoot it, they will score a few hits. But still, it's not a great look. I will even attempt to close the distance a little bit. And I'm still... Oh, where is it? I'm still fascinated by their perspective. Just seeing how these shells keep flying in. Ooh, close miss. Oh man, their bow has really been smashed. Look at this. Completely mangled. And they... They look kinda nervous. As I said, all that they see is the occasional muzzle flash in the distance. That is literally all they can spot. And then sporadic explosions as the shells hit them. Terrible fate. They will now shoot up another flare. 
I don't think it's going to help them. That was a hit that hurt. That was a devastating impact. They are going down. Something very important just detonated inside the ship. I think that shell penetrated um, into the boiler room. And this thing is going down. Yeah, that shell must have penetrated into the boiler room. Now explosions are traveling through the ship. Abandon ship. Well, that's my advice to these guys. Abandon ship as fast as you can. It's only gonna get worse. I'm not sure what this ship was carrying as a cargo. But once it started to go, it really got going. Explosions just went through the ship like a chain reaction. Impressive. And it's now going down fast, my god. What is this? How long, how much time has passed? Maybe two minutes? Since the fatal hit, and the deck is already beneath the waves. The cargo holds are now flooding completely, so the fire will be extinguished very soon. Maybe some oil will be left burning on the surface, that's a possibility. But this ship is. just gone. It is quite deep here as well, so it has a long voyage ahead of it. Okay, I'm surprised that it's sinking by the stern, honestly, considering how smashed up the bear is, but that's it. It's gone. Just like that. Air is being released from the ship, from the wreck, no lifeboats, a few survivors in the water, a few more that are clearly not moving anymore. This might be an all hands sinking. Back to our submarine. A moment of silence for these wave sailors who tried to cross the Atlantic in an effort to get supplies, much needed supplies, to their nation. Seewache auf Brücke! I don't think I've said this enough during this campaign, but historically speaking, the sailors of the merchant marine, of the merchant navy, um, are, I think are really underappreciated for what they went through, both the, the English sailors and the American sailors later on in the war. Waving the gauntlet of the Atlantic and the U-boats, the Luftwaffe once they got close to England, without much protection, very often without much protection. Later on it got a lot better, but in the beginning, very brave people. Right, with those sobering thoughts, I think we are ending today's episode. This has been a short one, an engagement that did not go according to plan, but was nevertheless successful. We will take a quick look at what we have actually sunk. 
it was just a small cargo ship of 2038 tons. But a fast one. A very fast one. Still, tonnage is tonnage. Another ship that will not transport any more supplies to England. Well, with that, I want to thank you very much for watching today's episode. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and that you will tune in next time when we continue this amazing campaign with hopefully some bigger fish to sink. Until then, have some great days and goodbye.